Hello everyone, this is Gautam Men, Associate Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Vidya Vardhaka College of Engineering, Mysuru. So let's uh, begin with the second session of uh, Module 2. So the learning objectives of this particular session is to find the inductance in a single phase two wire line and also in composite conductors. As I have already told in my session one, how important are line parameters in designing the transmission line network. So I also told that it will affect the performance of the transmission line because these parameters are distributed. Once it is distributed, it affects on a greater range because Conductors are usually rated in, the inductance is usually rated in per unit length. As a result, inductance value will greatly affect the performance of the transmission line. Resistance and inductance value greatly affect the performance of the transmission line, because resistance is usually neglected, which is also explained in session one. So you will also be able to know the concept of uh, GMR and GMD. That is geometric mean radius and geometric mean distance. So these are some of the learning objectives of this particular session. So let's begin with the value, how to find out, how will you find the inductance of a single phase two wire line? So in the last class, you have just studied the inductance of, uh, of a line of a conductor, so homogeneous solid conductor considering both internal flux and external flux linkages and both the flux linkage the total inductance was you need to add both the inductance that is inductance due to internal flux and external flux so that will give you the total inductance in a uh, of a conductor so similarly here in the similar grounds we will also be finding the inductance of a single phase two wire line the analysis and finding the inductance would be almost the same but there are certain changes so let us look at that in this particular session. So over here, we need to conduct consider a single phase line that is consists of uh, two parallel conductors. And these conductors are capable of forming a rectangular loop of one turn. OK, let's get into the conductor. So this is how a conductor looks like. So this is the representation of a conductor. So there are two conductors over here. So conductor one is of radius R1, conductor two is of radius R2. And the distance between the outermost uh, distance between the conductor is D minus R2. And the center part distance between the two conductors is D and the, both distances of R1 and R2 combinational is D plus R2. Okay, so as I said, we have considered a single phase line consisting of two parallel conductors and they're solid conductors with radius R1 and R2. So one circuit, yeah, one conductor is forming a return circuit to, for the other. So there are two conductors and one is forming a return circuit for the other. So this is very important. So when you get to know that one is capable of providing a return circuit for the other, you can clearly tell I1 is the current of conductor uh, one and I2 is the current of conductor two. There are two conductors here. So I1 is the current of conductor one. Okay, and I2 is a current of conductor 2. Both are not same. Two conductors are ca carrying current of I1 and I2 respectively. In a single phase circuit, you have I1 plus I2 over here is equal to 0. As I already mentioned, one conductor is forming a return circuit for the other conductor. As a result, I2 is equal to minus I1. As it is forming a return circuit to the other conductor, there's a negative sign over here. Okay, so here we are neglecting the effect of Earth's presence of magnetic field geometry as Earth's relative permeability is same as that of air and its conductivity is relatively small. Since it is relatively small, the effect of this is neglected. Earth's presence of magnetic field, whatever that is present in this particular conductor around it is neglected as the permeability is same as that of air and its conductivity value is very, very less. Okay, to start with, let us begin that only considering only the flux linkages of this circuit that is caused by the current in conductor one. So as I already mentioned, conductor I1 is the current flowing through conductor one and I2 is the current flowing through conductor two. So when the current starts flowing through a conductor, obviously there will be a magnetic field and flux linkages will be present. This flux lines will set up the current flowing through in conductor one at a distance equal to or greater than D plus R2 that was shown over here, D plus R2, 
it is because of the flux line that is setting up the current for flowing in a conductor one at a distance equal to or greater than t plus r2 that is from the center of the conductor and it is does not linking with the circuit hence it is not responsible for inducing any voltage circuit why it is not inducing any voltage only if the flux links you know as per the law only if the flux links and emf will be induced or else you will not have any induction of emf so this is responsible this process is responsible for inducing any voltage in the circuit this is to co consider conductor 2 will also carry a current which is equal to or opposite to that of conductor 1 because one is forming a return path to the other so it is equal to and opposite to that uh, of that of the conductor 1 so then external flux similarly like how we saw the last derivation external flux for r1 to my to d minus r2 links all the current i1 in the conductor 1 over the surface of the conductor 2 that is the reason you that is it's between d minus r2 and d plus r2 as shown in the figure so you have distance d minus r2 d and d plus r2 so when r2 r2 and gets cancel you get the middle part that is the total distance d external flux links a current whose magnitude progressively reduces from i1 to 0 because of the negative current in conductor 2 since it's forming a return path this is happening the total inductance of the current carrying in conductor 1 can be calculated you can calculate it by assuming a value of d which is greater than the value of r1 and r2 okay again continuing so you can also assume that the flux from a distance of d minus r2 to the center of conductor 2 to d minus r2 it is also linked zero current as explained previously the inductance due to current in conductor 1 can be calculated using the relation so this relation we have got it uh, the general expression of this relation is from the previous derivation that was done in the last class so l1 to is inductance between conductor 1 and 2 is 2 into 10 power minus 7 ln d2 by d1 henry per meter you got to know what is d1 and d2 as mentioned in the diagram so this expression will be valid only for external flux for internal flux as we already derived the above expression was also derived in the last class for internal flux the derivation is half into 10 to the minus 7 henry per meter the total inductance how do you get a total inductance here adding both internal and external flux linkages so half of the derivation over here is exactly similar to the previous derivation that was done in the last class but the only orientation over here is you have two conductors and you need to pay attention to the distances that we are writing that is d minus r2 d and d plus r2 if you get what exactly these are things will be very easy so now the total inductance because of internal and external flux linkages is addition you need to add the both that is half into 10 to the minus 7 plus 2 into 10 to the minus 7 ln d divided by r1 that's added okay so you will get a simplified equation one so the above you can again rewrite the above expression as 2 into 10 to the minus 7 ln e power 1 by 4 ln of d by r1 so ln e power 1 fourth is equal to if you simplify it you will get 1 divided by 4 when you substitute it in the next equation you get l1 is equal to 2 into 10 to the minus 7 ln in the numerator you will get e power 1 by 4 d divided by r1 so next you are you are bringing e power 1 by 4 to the denominator so it gets you gets a negative sign and this r1 dash is equal to minus 1 divided by 4 r1 so this so thereby the final expression gets reduced to 2 into 10 to the minus 7 ln d that e power minus 4 is nothing but e by minus 4 1 by 4 into r1 is replaced as r1 dash where r1 dash is nothing but 0.7788 r1 so what is this r1 dash and r1 just imagine a simple conductor small conductor it is having a radius r1 okay if it is a ac conductor if it's if it, if it's a ac what will happen you will have a tendency of the current to accumulate at the outer side it will not consider the complete cross sectional area it gets accumulated on the surface or on the outermost part so that distance and the inner and the distance from the radius that is from the center 
to the outer part is R1, but it is not happening like that. It will get accumulated only at the outer part. Then the remaining distance will be left out. And that distance is nothing but R1 dash. The radius of R1 is that of an imaginary or fictitious conductor assumed to have no internal flux. There will not be any internal flux because current will not flow in that part. As I already mentioned, R1 current will not flow. So the quantity e power minus 1 by 4 equals to 0 0.7788. The inductance of conductor 2 in comparison with when you compare this with equation 2, what will you get? L1, it's the same thing. What it, what the expression of L1 was same, but the only replacement that you are doing over here is that was for conductor 1, therefore it is R1 dash. When you consider the same thing and if you follow the same principle even for conductor 2, the derivation will be the same except in the denominator range of R1 dash you will have R2 dash. The analysis remains the same. So therefore the total inductance of a circuit of a single phase 2 while adding uh, inductance of conductor 1 plus inductance of conductor 2 is nothing but 4 into 10 power minus 7 lan d divided by root of r1 dash r2 dash henry per meter. And when you equi equalize for the sake of simplicity, if you just equate the uh, radius uh, of both r1 radius r1 dash r2 dash is equal to r dash, equation further gets simplified. So this is the equation for uh, inductance of a two wire single phase line taking into the consideration the flux linkages caused by the current in both the conductors. You can try L can either be L, as already mentioned here, what is about it's four into ten power minus seven lan d divided by root of r1 dash r2 dash next let us move on to the next part that is inductance of composite conductors so what is a composite conductor you have stranded conductors bundle conductors and composite conductors this bundle conductors probably would have studied some introduction in module one standard conductors solid conductors Okay, solid conductors are not usually preferred in for the transmission line. Transmission lines us, uh, usually prefer stranded conductors, aluminium based stranded conductors. The problem with stranded conductors is why we should go to calculate inductance of a composite conductor. Why not a stranded? Induct, stra composite is also a stranded conductor, but you can call it as composite stranded conductors. Stranded conductors have a, a problem of they have very less tensile strength and they are also prone to corona loss. Okay. They have a very less tensile strength because of the weak, since they are weak with less tensile strength, they, they are prone to sag. Okay, they get more affected by temperature and they're prone to sag. In order to avoid this, composite conductors were developed. One such prominent composite conductor is aluminium conductor steel reinforced, that is ACSR conductors. So you would have studied types of conductors in module one, ACSR conductors, so wherein aluminium conductor steel reinforced. So the center part of this conductor will have a steel rod. So it's making it compact and it is increasing the tensile strength of a normal standard conductor by adding a steel uh, rod. So it will enhance its strength and it, it capacity will also increase. So thereby it, it will be less prone to sag, like how a normal conductor, normal standard conductor gets uh, get exposed to sag. Okay, that, that is the reason uh, composite conductors are usually preferred in transmission lines. Again, over here you are supposed to find that you have A, B, C, X, and A dash, B dash, C dash, C dash, and Y. So conductor P, conductor Q. So conductor P has trans A, B, C. A conductor Q also has trans A dash, B dash, C dash up to Y and here up to X. Okay, so you're, we have assumed that P and Q are said to be the composite conductors. Okay, so conductor P here is consisting of X identical parallel filaments. So composite conductors, conductors will be in parallel with, will be parallel with respect to each other. So it's cons it consists of X identical parallel filaments, layers or strands. Okay. Each filament carries a current of I divided by X. Conductor Q is also consisting of Y strands, parallel strands. And each filament over here is carrying a current of minus I, y by I, minus I by Y. 
as already mentioned one is forming a return part to the opposite as a result the next one will always be negative that is the reason you have minus i divided by y that is conductor y carries a current of i amps in opposite direction to the current in conductor x as it's forming a return path so let us start in first finding the flux linkage and after finding the flux linkage flux linkage divided by current is nothing but the inductance we can simplify it it's just uh, if you if you're well versed with lan logarithmic simplification the things will be very easy over here okay initially you need to pay attention in writing the values of inductances but when you, if you know how to find an inductance of a two wire line if you are if you are used to that Cara derivations and starting off with this, this derivation won't be a problem. Okay, so let us find out the flux linkage that is psi denotes flux linkage with respect to conductor here because there is conductor P, uh, P conductor P has A, B, C, and X, Q has A dash, B dash, C dash, and Y. Okay, it's 2 into 10 power minus 7, I divided by X, lan 1 divided by DA, that is distance of conductor A with respect to its own, that is DA, A with respect to A. Okay, you should not miss out that. So next is current, you know current flowing through the conductor is because whenever you, how did I write 2 into 10 power minus 7, you should remember session 1's derivation. Okay, and why I, because flux linkage will always have a current, flux linkage will always have current. Okay, only if the current flows, you can find you can get the flux that is linking with respect to that. So I by X is the current in conductor flowing through the conductor P that is I divided by X. Lan of 1 divided by distance is same A of A. Next same current A of B. Next same current A is the starting conductor you should end it with X etc etc. Start with A it ends with X. Okay. Next same derivation 2 into 10 power minus 7 current flowing through in conductor Q is what? minus i by y because it is forming a return path again conductor a with respect to a dash next part minus i by y same current a with respect to b dash a with respect to c dash etc etc it is a to y next part next when you see if you simplify it further you get 2 into 10 power minus 7 i divided by x lan of write down the values till dx it's minus you can, in the because you are removing minus from the second of conduct in the flux linkage of conductor Q. So minus will come to the other side. Simplify it. So you, you know flux linkage. You've got you've got the flux linkages with respect to conductor A. So induct how to find the inductance with respect to conductor A? Flux linkage of conductor A divided by current. Current that is flowing through conductor A is I divided by X. If you simplify, this will be the equation. So since you have LAN, you know how to simplify it one below the other, mathematical. So in the similar grounds, how do you find out inductance of strand B, of filament B? Same thing. So here, you, there you started off with conductor A with respect to all other conductors. That is conductor A with respect to A, A, B, A, C, A, X. And you start for conductor Q, you start off with A, A dash, a, B dash, A, C dash, and A, Y. Similarly, here you start from B. The rem remains the same. The rest part of the derivation remains the same, and this would be the equation LB. Average inductance of the filaments of conductor P is what? L average. Conductor P has A, B, C plus X. Okay, strands. A, B, C, etc. with respect to X divided by x because there is x number the conductor p consists of x number of filaments if all the filaments are of equal distances okay then the inductance of the conductor would be 1 divided by x times the inductance of one filament okay i'll repeat so here as already mentioned conductor p has x number of strands you, if you assume that all the strands are having equal in, uh, inductances then the inductance of the conductor would be 1 by x times the inductance of each strand of filament. So what would be the inductance of conductor P? LP is nothing but L average divided by x. On simplification, this will be the expression. That is LP is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 7 lan x y root. Okay, you're because you've come you because it's the combination, you have considered both x and y. This will be the simplified expression. 
So in the example, what is the above expression, expression deal over here? And the numerator of argument of logarithm is the xy. That is the root of xy times. These terms are nothing but, what are these terms? They're nothing but the products of distances from all the filaments of the conductor P to all the filaments of uh, Y filaments to the conductor Q. So when you see a uh, component X, Y root, what does this X, Y root denote? X is of conductor P, as mentioned, A, B, C up till X. And uh, it is A dash, B dash, C dash up till Y. So it's ob very obvious that a a X is for P, X filaments, X number of filaments conductor P has and Y number of conductor Q has Y number of filaments. That is a meaning that you get when you just see this expression X, Y root. Okay, so as already mentioned, X, Y root of the product of X, Y distances. So this is this distance is called as geometric mean distance between conductor P and conductor Q. We, I'll just tell you what is this geometric mean distance, geometrical mean ratio in my next slide. So just remember what is, so it's just a denotion that is being made in order to simplify this complex expression. So this numerator and denominator is a bit complex, right? That has been simplified by using certain terminologies, by calling them differently. That is x, y th root of the product of the x, y distances is nothing but the geometric mean distance between conductor P and Q. That distance, whatever that you have calculated, is called as a distance. What distance is geometric mean distance? Because you've taken a mean of all strands with respect to X. It is termed as DM, which is nothing but the geometric mean distance. And it is also called as mutual GMD between the two conductors because one will be responsible for the, the linkages will be responsible with, for the uh, inductance and with respect to the other. It is that is the reason it is also called as mutual GMD between the conductors. So if you if we consider the distance DA, what this distance DA? It is a distance as I already mentioned, conductor A with respect to conductor A. Very if you want to be very simple and specific in knowing what is DA. So if you want to be uh, let us see what exactly it is. So that can how to calculate the distance of conductor A with respect to its distance. What is it? That will be a uh, you find it as a nightmare if you have to solve it or if you just imagine uh, finding a uh, distance of conductor A after some of distance is B. That's okay. But what is this DA distance of A with respect to A? As I already mentioned, you would be considering a normal conductor which, which is having a radius R. Okay, but do, if it's a, because of the skin effect in AC. Uh, uh, the kind the current trends it will not flow completely towards the area of cross section it will just accumulate over the surface of the conductor okay and the distance at the center it will not uh, flow or at next before the center also it will not flow it will be only flowing throughout the center so that complete over the part where it is not flowing okay that will also have some radius that is one distance and the distance from the center to the last part, outer part is radius, one radius. Okay, there the current is flowing. And if you just come further inside, current is not flowing there because it's flowing only at the outer part. That is one radius. So that is the reason you have two radius here, radius R and R dash or radius R1 of conductor one and R1 dash, if you want to be more specific. Similarly for R2, it is R2 and R2 dash, okay. That is the exact meaning of that. That is so what the, you should also find that distance which you left out. If you just consider R1, it is current only it's flowing through the outer part, but this inside also there is no current that is flowing. You should also consider that distance. That distance is nothing but A of A. That, it doesn't mean the distance of the filament from itself, which is also considered as R A dash. This R dash of a separate filament is called as self GMD of the filament. It is also called as geometric mean radius and it is defined as DA. So numerator is GMD, DM, denominator is GMR, geometric mean ratio, that is DA. So equation gets simplified as 2 into 10 power minus 7 lan DM divided by DS, Henry per meter. So this is the expression, the composite conductors that are made up of number of strands as already mentioned, filaments or strands and the conductors, uh, the strands are in parallel. So you found the value of inductance with respect to conductor P. Conductor Q, 
is the same thing if you start deriving in a similar grounds. So it is 2 into 10 power minus 7 lan dm divided by ds plus the same. On simplification, you will get 4 into 10 power minus 7 lan dm divided by ds energy per meter. So this is the most frequently asked question in V2 examinations. So this is so just initially you need to know some fundamentals pertaining to flux linkages and the generation of in inductance, especially the first derivation that is internal flux and external flux. If that is very much perfect, and even the inductance of a two-wire line, this composite lines will not make much difference because you have one number of conductors uh, that are in parallel, which is which we call it as trans, and which is enhancing its uh, what current carrying capacity and also the strength, the tensile strength of the conductor will be better. So you are, the conductors are not prone to sag on a larger uh, scale, like how normal standard conductors get prone to it. Now let us see what is this concept of GMD and GMR, geometric mean mean distance and geometric mean ratio, uh, sorry, radius. So as I already, very simple, in simple words, if you want to define what is geometric mean radius, it's effective radius up to which self flux linkage occurs very simple as i already told you if the conductor has a radius r1 i told you radius r1 will go till the outer part and because since it is ac because of skin effect current will accumulate only at the outer part of the conductor it will and it will not uh, uh, flow towards its complete cross-sectional area because of the skin effect okay effective radius is the part and a uh, part at which wherein you get flux linkages where, where when the current flows through that outermost part, only if the current flows only, you will have magnetic field lines, flux lines will emerge. So if there is no current, you will not have any flux linkages. So in a conductor, there is a place wherein you will not have flux linkage and you also have a place where there will be uh, flux linkages where, because of the current flow of current. And the radius that is contributing to set up flux linkages is nothing but geometric mean radius. So if it is a single or stranded conductor, you will call it as geometric mean radius. If it's a bundle conductor, you will call it as self GMD. Okay, that is self geometric mean distance. Both are same, more or less geometric mean radius and geometric mean distance is uh, same. Why is it called as self GMD? Because in bundle conductors will also have two or more stranded conductors. Bundle conductor will also have two or more stranded conductors, but they prefer bundle conductors for voltages above 220 kV. If the voltages are below 220 kV, bundle conductors are not preferred. And because bundle conductors, since you have two or more strand conductors that are st uh, stranded and bundled, its current carrying capacity will be high. It will also have uh, uh, reduced voltage gradient, so better strength. There are a lot of advantages of bundle conductor. Okay, and the main objective or the main use of GMD and GMR is it will be used to find the self inductance of the conductor and and the phase inductance of the line. You can find the self inductance of the conductor or the phase inductance of the line. So this is some of the major. Uh, uh, advantages of geometric uh, mean distance and GMR. So what is this self GMD as applied to this uh, derivation, the previous derivation? The same derivation, as I said, we got DM and DS, the same thing separately is discussed here. In order to have a concept of self GMD, we need to consider the expression that we already got it in the pre got it previously. That's nothing but 2 into 10 power minus 7, 1, 4 plus log E D divided by gamma or R D divided by R. Uh, 2 into 10 power minus, the nomenclatures depends, it depends, whatever the suitable nomenclatures can be used, it's R. So it's 2 into 10 power minus 7 into 1 fourth plus 2 into 10 power minus 7 log E D divided by R. Okay, so in this expression, you have a term 2 into 10 power minus 7 into 1 fourth. It's nothing but the inductance due to flux within the conductor, that is inductance due to internal flux linkages as already derived. So it's for, for the sake of simplicity, it's, it's very desirable to remove this term. And uh, how can you remove this term? By introducing a concept called as self-GMD or GMR. So you can call it as self-GMD or geometric mean radius. 
okay self gmd or geometric mean radius so if we so you are, that means you are replacing original solid conductors by an equivalent hollow cylinder with thin walls the current is confined to the conductor surface and internal flux linkage would be zero meaning what is the meaning of this because when you assume that the conductor is flowing only at the surface it is not flowing inside obviously when the current you don't have a current inside there will not be any flux linkages inside as a result you will be assuming it as zero as already explained previously uh, about the different radii that you get inside a conductor it's the same okay so inductance due to internal flux will be zero over here and totally that term is eliminated because current is not flowing it's proved mathematically the value of this already mentioned e power 1 by 4 into r that is nothing but 0 0.7788 so the expression gets further simplified as this so what is this mutual gmd it's nothing but the geometric mean of the distances from one conductor to the other so this is value of this will be the it will be the it will be between the largest and the smallest distance it will be in between it will be between the largest and the smallest it will be in between so what is this uh, it actually represents equivalent geometrical spacing what is it actually representing the mutual gmd between the two conductors is equal to the distance between their centers as already mentioned dm is a spacing between the conductor the mutual geometric mean distance because it has usually only if you have two conductors, you will have a concept of GMD and GMR. And this mutual GMD is, has to be between the two conductors and it should also be equal to the distance between their centers. So if you consider a single phase, a single circuit three phase line, its value is obviously equal to the distance one, distance two, distance three to, uh, to the power of one by, th one by three, okay, the value of that. Okay, thank you. So this is with respect to session two. So at the end of the session, you will be able to know, I feel that you are in a position to find out the inductance of a single phase uh, two wire line and also considering composite conductors. You also got to know the concept of GMD and GMR. Thank you.